behalf of the family, I want to thank everyone who is here this morning to celebrate the life of Christine Telfer. We are all here because Christine meant something to each and every one of us. We are here because we loved her. So here's our hope for this morning, that we can grieve together, that we can rejoice together, that we can bring words and expressions of comfort to Christine's family and friends. To properly celebrate Christine's life, we're going to spend time remembering her and celebrating the hope we all have in God through Jesus. That is why we lift up our hearts to God in song and prayer. That's why we're going to read words of comfort from God's word. It's because the only way we can find any joy in a moment like this is to know that God is victorious over death. But we're also going to share stories about Christine. We're going to talk about the Christine that we loved and why we loved her. Because that is also where we find joy in remembering the person, not forgetting them. So today, I pray it can be a day of healing and hope for everyone here. If you have a program, you'll notice we're going to begin with a congregational song, an Old Testament and New Testament reading of the scriptures, and a prayer. Good morning, church. Um, Prayers for the family. Um, I know it can be tough. Miss Christine was one of the members here at Holmes Road Church of Christ. And I'm honored to be here because I was told by Miss Pat that I was one of her favorite song leaders. So um, as for me, um, Miss Christine stepped in for my family, for my wife and I, with our son Devin Jr. because he has autism. And she stepped in right, right when he... Um, had problems in the church, she stepped right in. And that's that's what that's the thing that I can remember her about. She always had a urgent heart to help out. And um when they called me and they wanted me to sing, I said I'd step in and do the same thing like Miss Christine would do for me. So if you have your songbooks, turn your songbooks to page 853 when we all get to heaven. They're located in the back pews. Uh if you know it, please sing along. Let us sing, sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. And when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. And while we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will over spread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. And let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him and glory will the toils of life repay. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Oh, when we all, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And when we all see Jesus, 
will sing and shout the victory. Our Old Testament scripture reading will come from the book of Psalms. First will be Psalms 116, verse 15, and then Psalms 23. Psalms 116, verses 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and, lo and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good morning. You know, I was sitting here uh, looking at this um, picture of Christine and looking at the smile on her face. It is a signature of joy uh, that lived inside of her because of the confidence that she had in her relationship with God. And she lived that out in front of us every day. And um, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures in the New Testament that speaks to the confidence that we can have in the precious promises that come to us as Christians. Beginning in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, it says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And in Revelations chapter 21, beginning in verse 1, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Let's go to God in prayer. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name throughout the ages. We approach you in prayer this morning, acknowledging and thanking you as the only true God. That you're a God of love, a God of compassion, a God of empathy and understand the mixed feelings of sorrow and joy that we have this morning. Sorrow because of the passing of Christine from this life and the effect that it will have 
on each one of us. The loss of a mother, the loss of a sibling, a loss of a relative, a loss of the member of the Holmes Road body that meets here at this place. Loss of a fellow school teacher and the loss of a friend. You know how Christine's passing affects each one of us and the uncertainty that it brings into our lives. But we also come with joy in our hearts, thinking about the positive influence she has had on each one of us. We smile when we think of her smile. We sing when we recall her singing praises to you as her God. We're so thankful that she is Travis's mom and for the close relationship she has had with Travis. We're strengthened in our spirits when we witness the positive attitude that she has displayed throughout her life and particularly these last eight months. As she dealt with various medical treatments, physical weakness and pain, but never complaining or feeling sorry for herself. Their only concern was the well-being of Travis and those that were serving her. We're thankful for the example she set as she faced these various trials. We're thankful for the support that she has received from members of this the body here at Holmes Road and former members as she's dealt with this sickness. And we praise you for that. And Father, we're thankful for her faith in you, for her faith in Jesus Christ, her confidence that she displayed up into her death. We're thankful for Kevin Weaver in the Weaver and Craig Law Firm and the social worker, Miss Siegel, who working together brought about her adoption of Travis 10 minutes before she passed from this life. We're thankful for Teresa for staying by her side these last several weeks. And Father, we're thankful for Greg and his willingness to care for Travis as a guardian. We pray for his strength and our support of him as he undertakes that task. And Father, we're thankful just for the complete life of Christine. We pray that we will look to her life as an example of how we should live that we'll have the strength and courage to live likewise as we honor God, as we honor Christine and seek to please them. We make this prayer humbly in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who gives us hope, the one who has promised us life. We pray it in his name. Amen.
one of the things we do in moments like this are we we lift our voices to God. Um, here in just a moment, Brother Paul is going to get up here and share solo, um, and then we'll do another congregational hymn by our Brother Devin. Um, allow this to be a time that we remember what matters most, the God we sing to and the God who holds Christine. Paul. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared but if the storms don't cease, and if the wind keep blowing in my life, my soul has been anchor in the Lord. Though my friends have gone and left me by myself, and the road it seems to get longer day, by day still my god he leads me through the ups and downs and my god he gives me strength to fight the fight and make it through the toys and snares of this old world and present aid. Oh, but if the storms don't cease, and just in case the wind it keeps on blowing in my life, my soul. Yes, it is. My soul's been anchored in. In the Lord, uh, my soul, my soul, oh, my soul's been anchored, uh, my soul's been anchored, uh, my soul's been anchored, uh, my, 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 my soul, my soul's been anchored, uh, my soul's been anchored, uh, the billows may roll, uh, the breakers may dash, uh, and I shall not sway because he holds me fast. Uh, I saw out today uh, the clouds in the sky. I know it's all right because Jesus is my, my soul, uh, my soul, my soul. My soul, my soul's been anchored. 
My soul's been anchored on. My, 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 my soul. My soul has been anchored in, in the Lord. Amen. Turn your song books to page 744. 744 God's family. I believe all of us in here are just one big family trying to make it to see God. We're going to do uh, stanzas one and three. 744 God's family in the song book. Do we all have it? Let us sing. We're part of the family that's been born again part of the family who loves knows no end for jesus has saved us and made us his own now we're part of the family that's on its way home. And sometimes we laugh together. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs. And sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven, God's family. And those, those before us will all meet again just inside the city. As we enter in, there'll be no more parting. Will Jesus will be together forever? God's family. And sometimes we laugh together. Sometimes we cry, sometimes we share together heartaches and sighs, and sometimes we dream together of how it will be when we all get to heaven. As we continue, we come to that moment of expressions, and I want to explain something. These are important. This is where we share stories. We let people know about the Christine we knew. But here's the reality. Not all of you are going to get up here and be able to do that. That's okay. Because if you think this is the place where that's most needed, you're wrong. It will be when you leave this place. It'll be in the days and the weeks and the months and the years to come. There are two rules. This is from the family. Three minutes. Now, I don't have a wristwatch. But I got this. So I'm going to stand right up here in the back. And when that three minutes has come, you will feel a hand on your shoulder. And that is wherever you're at, you are done. <laughs> The second is expressions are not going to last indefinitely. There has been a meal prepared for family and friends. I think, like me, you would like to eat that warm instead of cold. Um, and also, that is where we're going to have more time for these expressions, where we can sit around tables and talk. 
But at this time, if there's an expression you would like to share, the podium is yours, Kim. Hello. My name is Kimberly Womack. I've been friends with the uh, Telfer family for years, so I just could not let this moment go by. It was times where, when we were young, when I, when they came to Southside Church of Christ, we were all together, me, Olivia, Teresa, Christine. We all had houses to go to, but we always chose to sleep on the floor, made pallets on the floor, just so that we could be uh, together. We couldn't wait to the weekends so that we can go to the Telfer's house. And the sister, sister and brother Telfer, they never treated me and Olivia any different than, she, than they she treated Carlos, Christine, and um, Teresa. So I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be a, a part of your family. And I love you guys. I'm always going to be there for you. Time took us away, you know, took us, separated us, but love brought us back together. And I love you and I always will. There's a whole lot of shoulders to touch here. Push. Just push. Good morning. If we have any more members of the our uh, classmates that went to Southside High School, would you please stand? Yes, yeah, uh, class of the year, you all said, uh-uh, you won. <laughs> Thank you. Resolution in loving memory of 1990 Scrapper Christine Telford. To the family and extended family of Christine Telford, we the Southside High School class of 1990 are praying with you as we gather to bid farewell to a woman of faith and child of God, 1990 Scrapper Christine Telford. Travis, your mother remained rem, remained to a close knit group of childhood friends. She was always available to share an encouraging word and strong support to them. For many of us, our relationship with Christine existed. For the moment she walked through the halls of 1880 Prospect, Christine was adored and well respected for her musical talent, which was displayed in Southside High School, Scrapper Band. She, her smile is eternally embedded in our memories. In September 2023, we celebrated our, 23rd, our 33rd class reunion. Although Christine was not in attendance, she was eno enormously missed by her classmates, whereas the passing of our beloved Scrapper, 1990 Scrapper Christine Telford, is a human connection that has been broken, yet we are encouraged and consoled in the words from the Holy Bible, Hebrews 13, um, chapter 13, verse 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yes, yes, yes. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the Southside High School, class of 1990, embrace 1990 scrapper Christine Telford's family. Now, there is a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We all love Scrapper Christine and cannot replace her, but we will continue to demonstrate the adoration and respect for her by maintaining the dev devotion and encouragement she had for each of her classmates. We know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, and we share in your loss and sorrow. Humbly submitted on the 23rd day of March, uh, uh, 2024, the Southside High School, class of 90. Amen.
Hello, everyone. My name is Gwen Taylor, Evangelist Gwen Taylor. Christine was my first cousin. I remember when I attended a Southside High School, I used to walk Carlos, Christine, and Teresa to school. And there's a lot of memories concerning her. She, uh, no matter what, she's always had that smile. I don't care what it is. Whatever that was bothering her, you would never knew what was going on because she always kept that smile. And what I wanted to leave with the family and everyone else is three scriptures and take this in heart. Philippians 4 and 13 said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Philippians 4 and 19 said, he supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge who God is in your life, and he shall direct your path. That's my expression to the family and everyone in this room. Hello, my name is Lavella Lopez, and I am a church member of Christine. She belongs to the ladies' Bible class led by Pat Ison. Pat wanted us to think of things that made us remember Christine, things that Christine did. I can sum Christine up as a person that faced it. She was always focused on whatever she needed to do. She always took action. She didn't wait for you to do it. She had compassion. She had empathy. She had integrity. And she was very talented. And she used those talents to help us. So we sum her up as a face it type of woman in Jesus' name. Good morning. We are the Lawrence Sisters of Christine. Um, we are all part of Tau Beta Sigma Honorary Band Sorority from Kentucky State University, Beta Row Chapter. We are today comforted by the words of our Lord in Revelations 21.4, which says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Whereas Christine Telford, a member of Tau Beta Sigma National Band Sorority, Beta Row Chapter, passed from this life on March 11, 2024, and whereas it has pleased Almighty God to take unto himself our sister too soon by our measure, but in the providence of the all-knowing divine, and whereas in God's holy wisdom he has called home Christine to dwell with him in the glories of paradise, the officers, active, and alumni members of Zeta Row Chapter of Tau, Tau Beta Sigma National Band Sorority offer their sincere condolences to the family. Your sorrow is our sorrow. Your loss is magnified by the loss of a dear soul from our sorority. And whereas, in view of the void we have sustained for the loss of our friend and sister Christine, and of the still heavier loss sustained by those who were nearest and dearest to her. Therefore, be it resolved that it is but a just tribute to the memory of the departed to say that in regretting her removal from our midst, we mourn for one who was in every way worthy of our respect and regard. To the family of Christine, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, and we share in your sorrow. Yet we recognize that our beloved Christine has fought the good fight of the faith, and we trust that she has taken hold of the eternal life to which she has been called and for which she made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Remember that we are here to support you in your time of need. You will be in our thoughts and prayers in the days, months, and years to come. Humbly submitted on this 23rd day of March 2024, the officers, active and alumni members of Zeta Row Chapter of Tau Beta Sigma National Band Sorority.
Good morning, everyone. Bittersweet. Bittersweet, literally. Christine, doing it again, bringing people together. My name is Thaddeus C. Wilson. <laughs> I'm a cousin. Christine, I'm going to ask everyone that's sitting here today, don't let funerals plan your family reunion. Listen to me. Be amendful today if there's any family member that you have offended, wronged, what have you. Forgive. You understand what I'm saying? Forgive for the reasons of. Tomorrow's not promised. Be amendful today. Tell that person you're sorry. Forgive them. God is a forgiving God, too. So I challenge you, be amenful and forgive. Call that family member. Say hello to them. Check on them. Don't let this occasion be why you all are together. Outside of this occasion, the family goes on to our elder, Uncle Sidney, and Louisa. We'll be at ease. And we'll remain at ease. Love one another. And again, I say to you, don't let a funeral plan your family reunion. Glory be to God. Thank you. That was beautiful. And I'm also surprised I didn't have to come put my hand on your shoulder. I thought... Uh, once you went over here, I thought, oh, it's preaching time. <laughs> no, that was beautiful. Thank you for that. Thank you. At this time, we're going to have a silent reading of the obituary. So if you have your program, take just a few minutes to open that up and read the inside. When I was reading the obituary, I only had one question. So it said seven nephews and three nieces, right? So did I read that correct? I think I have an aunt, like Christine was an aunt, where aunt's not a fair term. It's a secondary mother. 
I don't think she had seven niece, nephews and three nieces and a son. I think she had a whole, body, whole bunch of kids that she loved like only a mother can love. That's what makes things like this hard. A celebration of life is an interesting thing. It's interesting because we come here with multiple feelings. I mean, the, the main and usually the first feelings are pain and grief, right? The reason for those feelings is because death is always unwelcomed. I'm not saying that we don't want relief from pain. But death is described in Scripture as the last enemy of God. I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody named an enemy of God that's wanted. That's ever a good thing. Death is never a good thing. Death is not God's plan. But death can defeat, or God can defeat death. He can take away the sting of death. But death will still leave survivors brokenhearted, crushed, and in need of rescue. The psalmist says in Psalm 34, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Ezekiel 34 says, as a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I'm assuming many of us here feel like sheep who have been scattered and lost. We feel brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. We gather together today and it's difficult. It's shocking. It's painful. I believe I heard somebody in the expression says, and it's too soon. I know there were many prayers offered up for Christine. And there have been many tears shed for her. I want us to know that it is okay to not be okay right now. It's okay to feel sad, hurt, even angry. Death is a time for mourning and grief. Death brings a very sudden end to a relationship. Death is painful and not what God wanted. But as I said... A celebration of life brings many different feelings, right? For the one who believes in God and has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, death also brings hope and peace. As we read, the Lord said he is close to the brokenhearted, that he saves those who are crushed in spirit. God says that when we are scattered, he will seek us out, he will find us, and our delivery will come at a time of darkness. For a lot of you, this is that time. This is that dark time. This is that time where you need rescue from your grief. You need rescue from your anger. Rescue from your confusion. And rescue from your hopelessness. And I believe God offers that. I believe he offers hope and deliverance for those who weep and mourn. The Ecclesiastes writer tells us that there's a time for everything, right? Y'all know that passage. There is a time for mourning and a time for rejoicing. I'm going to say this. I believe for the one who dies in Christ, it is one of those few times where both happen at the same time. We mourn and rejoice at the exact same time. We mourn who death has taken from us. We mourn the loss of a relationship. But we also rejoice in the gift of grace and eternal life that God gives to the one who dies in Jesus. Our sister Christine is at rest with the Father. The truth may not take away all our hurt, but God has taken away all of Christine's hurt. We have prayed for healing for Christine. And even though God did not give Christine the healing we had hoped for, he did give her eternal and permanent healing. See, we pray for what we think we want. We pray for what we think needs to happen. God knows what we need. God knows what we should want. We weep for our loss. But we also find joy and peace in the fact that Christine is home. 
safe, here free, pain free. No longer does Christine have to sit and lay down and wonder what's going to happen to her body the next day or the next minute. All those pains are gone and she's been given a new body. We weep for the family and friends who no longer get to see Christine. That's the worst thing. I, I can't think of anything worse than the end of a relationship. But here's your hope, Teresa and everyone else. It's really not. It's a pause on a relationship. We may not get the relationship like we had it here. We're going to get it better. We're going to get it where we don't have to worry about all the worries. But we can be in the presence of our Father. We don't have to worry about bodies that will wear down. We'll have new bodies that will last forever. We don't have to be worrying about disappointing one another. Because God will take away that disappointment. One of the best ways to find peace and joy in the face of grief and, grief and sadness is to celebrate the life of the one who is gone. We find peace that they are not gone forever, that we'll be reunited. But the way we find it on a day-to-day -day basis is we don't let that memory, that legacy die. We celebrate the life by talking about the life, by laughing about things that were done in the past, crying about things, thinking about things. We don't forget who was here. We share stories. One of the reasons we share stories is it gives us insight into the person, right? We had different groups get up here. People from school, people from her, her sorority, right? We had cousins, and we have lot, uh, church, member fam, church members. Everybody has a different story because they knew Christine in a different way. And when we all get together and share those st stories, guess what we get? A complete picture. We get to better know who Christine really was. So I asked a lot of people about Christine, and a lot of people shared different things, and I knew I wouldn't have to worry about sharing too much because of the expressions. One thing was that smile, right? It's what I heard from almost everybody you talked to, and if you knew Christine at all, you knew the smile. I asked one person, and I'll leave her name quiet, but she shared a story about the time she complimented Christine on a pretty velvet chartreuse colored shirt she was wearing. She put in parentheses when she shared it with me that that was the color because she didn't think I knew what chartreuse was. But she paid a compliment and she told Christine how she, pretty she looked in it and how much she admired that shirt. The very next time she saw Christine, you know what she was holding? Gift bag. And in that gift bag was that shirt. And from everybody I talked to, that is who Christine was. She just had this spirit of generosity, giving the shirt off her back. Well, going and buying another shirt and giving it up. People told, and I already heard it in the expressions, about just spending time with her. One of our members talked about the time she could just go over there and spend all day with Christine. And what was Christine's was hers and vice versa. Just this generous, giving spirit. Her joy-filled laugh or the love that would overflow from her and fill up every person that was around her. These are the stories we share because they show us the character of a person worth remembering. I'm going to say that part again. She is worth remembering. We need to talk about the godly traits of Christine. We need to celebrate, but we need to go one step further. It's important to talk about all those good things. But if we don't adopt those good things, what a waste. If we don't talk about that smile and then try to give that smile to others, if we don't talk about that generosity and then try to share that generosity with others, what are we saying about her legacy? We're saying, I was thankful for her, but I'm not going to live that out. And we're going to rob people of who Christine was by not sharing who Christine was in our lives. That is what it means to live your life as a testimony to the God you love. 
It is your hope that people will see that God and emulate that in their lives. Christine's actions were not by accident. It was because she had the Spirit of God in her, and she did not quench the Spirit. So when you see that Spirit, celebrate it and adopt it. Live out those things. Let's think about Christine's life as we close like a tree. All right? When trees are cut down or they fall down for natural reasons, they will always leave a part of themselves in the place they fell, even if they're removed. So much life is given when a tree falls. Trees will but leave behind remnants of itself, remnants that help new life spring forth. This new life not only exists because of the life that ended, but the life that ended is echoed in the new life. You'll see it in the smiles of her nephews and nieces. You'll see it in the hugs and the love and the generosity of family and friends. That is the life that is echoing. Christine may be gone. She may have fallen too soon. But her legacy, the seed that she sowed, can spring up in the life of her friends and family. Those who know Christine should remember her generous spirit, her kind heart, her joyful nature, the love she had, and then allow those things to be produced in their lives. I begin this eulogy by reminding us that God heals the brokenhearted. If the loss of Christine has left you brokenhearted, allow the draw Lord to draw you close. If you are crushed, allow the Lord to save your spirit. He will bring you back from the depths of despair. He will shine light on you when life is its darkest. Let God bring you back to a place of joy and hope. And for the family and friends of Christine, she may not be here with you anymore, but she is at home waiting on you. She is home where there are no more worries, no more pain, no more cancer, no more goodbyes. I pray this truth can give you peace in the days, weeks, months, and years to come. And the final thought I will leave you with comes from Philippians. Let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. At this time, uh, the family would like to thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for your support. The family would like to thank you for extending kind words, prayers, uh, loving hugs, visits, and other thoughtful expressions of sympathy. These acts serve as a source of strength and comfort during our time of bereavement. We are grateful and may God abundantly bless each and every one of you. So at this time, this does end and conclude the, the service. And the family would like to uh, invite you over to the repast, which will be uh, in the Family Life Center to my left, uh, your right. So if you leave the building the way that you came, you can um, walk across the, the parking lot to the Family Life Center here. And uh, we, we would like to ask that you all would visit there instead of here. So let the Family Life Center be the area where you, where you visit and, and fellowship. So at this time, we will allow the family to be dismissed first. And after the family has uh, been dismissed and going to the Family Life Center, then the rest of us will be dismissed also uh, to head over there. So at this time, uh, the, the, the family will go ahead and head over to the Family Life Center. Thank you all for being here.
Okay, at this time, um, we'll all be dismissed to head over to the Family Life Center. Thank you all. Thank you. 